Hi everyone and welcome back to Photoshop Elements Imaging Techniques and Tips. I'm your guide to this series, Ken Keith, and we appreciate you tuning in today on a beautiful Easter Sunday in Kansas City. Hello to all of you in the local users group and those of you who are watching us on Vimeo and YouTube here in the U.S. and around the world. We appreciate you dropping by. Well, we're going to look at what I call the curved print look. It's uh, something that uh, you often see that's very popular with the scrapbookers and uh, it also has, I believe, some applications for uh, some other creative looks within Photoshop Elements, things that you can do with your own images. It's a lot of fun, so let's get right to it. Well, the first thing I've, I've done is I've just applied from the content palette onto a blank document this um, uh, pre-made background of uh, the continent of Africa and then I've also opened uh, one of my zoo pictures which I believe uh, looks quite a bit like uh, a cheetah stalking in the high grasses on the African plains and I'm just going to uh, drag and drop that photograph into this one I'm going to say a photograph or call it an image here I'm going to uh, resize it obviously a bit so that it fits a little better there okay I'm going to leave it in this spot for now and uh, something that would help us uh, uh, make this more look like uh, a print that you would get from a lab one that had a, has a, a little white border let's let's add a white border to that and I'm just going to go up to the edit menu stroke outline selection 30 pixels it depends uh, a little bit on obviously on the, the resolution the size of your photograph but I'm going to start maybe with 30 and uh, all those edges on those prints have a white background so I'm just going to choose white from the color picker and uh, use inside location and uh, just click OK. Okay. So now we're going to go up to the filter menu and under distort choose shear. Now your default will show or you may want to start with the default probably the best idea in which the straight line that you see is is uh, it, that's your default the straight line and you want to start that way and wrap around this is fine you can leave that checked you don't have to do anything down here and I'm going to click and hold on my cursor at the center point of this line and drag it a bit to the right and click OK and now we have some nice curvature to our print and um, now we're going to we have the simulated print and it's like it's curled a little bit or coming off the surface so w w I guess you could stop here if you wanted to but let's give it some more realism by adding a drop shadow to it but not the drop shadow that's in the uh, effects palette menu because those will just not look realistic you know try it go ahead I think you'll find that uh, it, it looks pretty crappy so uh, we're going to start by duplicating our photo uh, the cheetah the background uh, not the background layer but the, the photo layer I'm just going to press control J and now highlight this original image layer this is going to be our drop shadow layer and in order to do that we're going to go over here and uh, you're going to make sure that your foreground is on black once again remember to highlight this air this layer and press the control key and click right on the thumbnail and that's going to load that as a selection it's it's actually behind this document if you want to unclick that uh, icon that'd be fine 
and uh, now that we have the foreground selected as black we're going to press the alt and backspace key to fill this and this is going to be our drop shadow now if we see a drop shadow it, you know it's a little bit uh, changed up and as a matter of fact to get this to look real what we're going to do is we're going to go up to our image menu rotate and flip selection horizontal and that's that's going to give us a realistic drop shadow and we're going to uh, do a couple of other things first uh, your drop shadows unless you have an extremely hard light are not going to be uh, this dense so we're going to go up to filter and blur and Gaussian blur seven pixels would be fine to blur it and then we're going to lower the opacity of it and you can experiment around with that probably somewhere in the 30 to 40 percent range you, you decide on your own and uh, redo my uh, and click on the icon so we can see this visibility now you can see it's starting to to peek out and while we still have this layer highlighted we're going to press the V key, which is the Move tool, and now that we have the drop shadow, we've got a hold of it, and we can let it uh, peek out. And, and to be realistic, it's going to be out a little bit like this. And if that's a little bit too much, you can do Control T. Go back there. and you can play around with um, the look and the size of this. Pull that in just a little bit. And now you have a simulated print photo with its own drop shadow. It's going to take a lot of time to mess with it, but you know you can uh, do a lot of things with the uh, the opacity using the Control T for free transform and get your drop shadow just like you like it and give it some realism. Well, that's a quick one today. It's a lot of fun to do. I've seen some variations. This to me was the easiest way to uh, accomplish this, and uh, I hope you have a great uh, Easter the rest of the week, and we'll talk again. Take care.